Welcome back to this channel guys. Today I will be recapping the two DC best short animation movies called Constantine House of Mystery and Batman Death in the Family. The Batman Death in the Family movie begins with Robin taking down some drug dealers. Robin fighting method was just too aggressive as he almost killed every criminal he fought. Batman scolds him because all they had to do is to disarm and interrogate the criminals, but they can't since he already knocked them half dead. Batman sees all of this as his fault. Robin father was killed by Two-Face while his mother died from a terrible sickness. He shouldn't have put Robin into the vigilant field since he is still recovering from his loss, and his aggressiveness towards the criminals are guarded by his unresolved pain and anger. He's a danger to himself. Batman has no other choice but to relieve Robin from his duties, who forsakes Batman and leaves Gotham City. Batman reunites with Robin few months later, who appears to be tracking down the Joker. He scolds Robin for doing this alone since he's really dangerous. Robin instead asks him why he keeps locking the Joker in a cell if he always escapes and kill more people. Batman informs Robin that Joker is now working with Raz al Ghul to create radioactive dirty bomb and sell it to terrorists. Robin reveals to have a lead on their location, so the proud Batman decides to put him back on the mission. Batman prepares to attack Raz al Ghul men escaping the borders with the bomb, while Robin wants to attack Joker in the warehouse behind them. Joker is too dangerous, so he begs Robin not to do anything but just stay and observe the warehouse. Robin disobeys Batman and gets captured by the Joker who beats him mercilessly. After handling Raz al Ghul men, he attempts to save Robin, but the Joker placed a time bomb in the warehouse which explodes before Batman could rescue him. Batman gives a summary of his life to Clark Kent. Five years following Robin's death, Batman doubled his efforts to protect Gotham City along with Nightwing whom he admires, because he normally shows up at the exact moment he needs an extra hand. Batman was tracking down an arms shipment for the crime lord called the Black Mask, but he instead ends up capturing some hijackers who intercepted the shipment. They confess that they are working for the rival of Black Mask called the Red Hood. Before they could say any more word, a sniper from Red Hood ended their lives. Living Nightwing behind and safe, Batman chases Red Hood to a factory using his jet, but it turns out to be a trap. Batman is able to escape from the building before the factory explodes. After some research, Batman finds out the Red Hood was killing all the members of the crime syndicate one by one. He had to protect the rest of them by stopping Red Hood, but to do that, he needs leads. Along with Nightwing, Batman enters Arkham to interrogate the Joker concerning the whereabouts of Red Hood, but their efforts prove useless. With no accomplice or base of operation to investigate, Batman decides to use Red Hood known target Black Mask to lure him out. He staked out Black Mask's newest drop of traffic weapon hoping for Red Hood to show up and he wasn't disappointed. Batman and Nightwing gives him a hot chase but this guy's ability to counter their attacks on the run was just astonishing. He even escaped Batman grappling lines which no one has ever done before. Frustration made Batman stupid and careless which landed him to another trap by Red Hood. They managed to save their lives but Red Hood escaped. Because of his bad choices, Nightwing was injured. Batman had to do this mission alone to avoid repeated mistakes. This was getting personal because of Red Hood has knowledges of his tactics and methods of escaping. He even finds evidence that Red Hood knew his real name. Batman wasn't the only one hunting the Red Hood. Black Mask, who wanted to flush him out, declares an all-out war against Red Hood organization. Red Hood was outnumbered by high-tech assassins sent by Black Mask to kill him. Batman comes to assist him and he realizes his fighting method are so similar. When Red Hood didn't spare any of the assassins, Batman remembers the past argument with Robin who always wanted him to kill criminals instead of sparing them. It was safe to conclude that Red Hood is Robin. He discovers Robin Goal which is cleaning out all the criminals from Gotham since his way of handing criminals doesn't work. Continuing the story, he tells Clark Kent that Robin must have been resurrected. Batman believes the only person capable of bringing Robin back from the death is Raz al Ghul. Raz al Ghul is a formidable enemy but also an honorable one. He even one day tried to make Batman to get married to his beloved daughter Dahlia. At a time there was once a twisted sense of family between them, until he made deal with the Joker. The fact that Raz al Ghul too was a father, he was deeply grieved by Robin passing. Desperate to rectify his disservice to Batman, Raz al Ghul stole Robin's body from the coffin and placed it in his Lazarus pit as it had helped him cheat death. He successfully resurrects Robin, but it came with consequences. While the Lazarus pit revives the body, the effect of the mind was unpredictable. This process made Robin crazy that he escaped the house of Raz al Ghul despite his effort to contain him. Anyway, Robin was a nightmare to his own making, so Batman had to return to Gotham to stop him. The war in Gotham had already escalated. Robin directly tries to kill Black Mask but failed. 
Black Mask not wanting to get his hands dirty, broke the Joker out of Arkham to hire him to kill Robin. But no one ever hires the Joker. He captures Black Mask and tied him up in the back of a trailer soaked in gasoline. Joker's rampage gets Robin attention. Something we didn't know is, getting Joker out of Arkham was Robin's plan all along, and Black Mask was just a pawn to make it happen. Robin was playing the long game of revenge against the entire criminals of Gotham, especially the Joker. Robin captures the Joker and tells Batman to meet them at the Crime Ally, a place Batman lost his both parents and a place he adopted Robin. Batman begs Robin to stop, but he keeps attacking giving him no choice but to defend himself. Robin brings out the tied-up Joker and tells Batman that he would have forgiven him for not rescuing him that night of the explosion, but Batman never avenged his death afterwards. Not killing Joker for killing him was a betrayer he couldn't accept. He gives Batman a gun and forces him to make a choice. It's either he kills the Joker or he kills Robin to stop him from murdering Joker. Batman instead tries to leave and the angry Robin tries to kill him, but Batman ends up disarming him. Robin activates a time bomb to kill both him and the Joker, but Batman rescues him. Robin disappears after that, and it is at this point Batman ended his story with Clark Kent. Clark tells Batman that he is the strongest person he knows not because of the monsters he fights on the outside, but for the demons he fights on the inside. The movie ends as Superman tells Batman that they will find Robin together. The Constantine House of Mystery movie begins with a narrative that tells us how all hope was lost after the Justice League Apocalypse War with Darkseid. The world was a mess, with bodies rotten in the streets. The Justice League won the battle, but they all lost someone they love. During this grief, John Constantine had an idea. What if there was a way to make all of these chaos never had happened in the first place? For the plan to work, he needed the speed of the Flash to recreate the Flashpoint and rewrite the past. John guided him with his magic to change past and to keep Darkseid from finding them. But for doing this, John faces consequences. He wakes up in a mysterious house with no idea on how he got there. He opens one of the doors only to get a birthday surprise from his friends for turning 50. Everything just seemed weird. His lover Zatanna shows up and kisses him. Constantine is confused how she's still alive because she died in the war. Two kids he never knew he had called Della and Jack comes to greet him. John gives them a goodnight kiss, but something strange begins to occur. His two children started coughing, and before he could do anything about it, they both spat out blood and died. This didn't stop as all his friends, including his lover, begins coughing too, before they all collapse dead. While Constantine is in shock on what is going on, the bodies of his friends and family that had just died turn to demons. They attack and kills him. John wakes up to what looks like a bad dream to him. He opens another room where he sees his friends playing games so he joined them. They all laugh and make fun of themselves, but they suddenly turn to demons and kills him. He wakes up again and everything now seemed like someone is playing with his head. He hears a sound from another room and casts a spell to take down whatever it is. He opens the door just to see a half-naked Zatanna. He pulls out his clothes to have sex with her and asks if the kids are asleep, but she replies they don't have kids. John knows something is really wrong because it was not long ago when Zatanna introduced him to his kids. Zatanna suddenly transforms into a terrifying monster and breaks his neck. John wakes up again, but this time instead of opening any doors, he decides to use the stairs instead. He finally sees a window and tries to break it to leave the house, but it was just an illusion. Furious, he uses his magic to break out of the house. He draws a symbol and casts it a magic to remember how he got here, but the monster Satana disrupts this moment by killing him. He wakes up again to find himself a dining room with his friends and family. He knows it's all an illusion and excuses himself to the restroom. With no water to cast the spell, John had no choice but to use the one from the toilet. He finds out that it was a godlike being called the Spectre who trapped him in the House of Mystery. Spectre tells him that changing the past did not only create a ripple, but a tidal wave of disturbance, and the Spectre took it upon himself to punish him. John begs that he didn't know it was against the rules, but the Spectre announces his punishment by sentencing him to spend the eternity in the House of Mystery. After learning the truth from the Spectre, the memory wipe and confusion spells used on him stopped working. The Spectre spell keeps resetting John back to square one where he has experienced death at the hands of his friends and family over and over again. John has been trying to escape but fails. The closest of him escaping was when he killed all the demons, but ended up being eaten by a tree for behind. John kept on fighting and dying which turned into month and months years and years into decades. Things gets from bad to worse when a demon called Nurgle shows up in the House of Mystery and captures John. Nurgle tells John that when he heard Spectre announcement that he was exiled to the House of Mystery, he couldn't abide by that because John's soul belongs to him, so he should be the one to give the punishment. Another portal opens and a demon named Beelzebub emerges out of it.
she claims she will be doing the torturing and brings out an ownership paper of his soul. As an Urkel wonders if John sold his soul twice, another demon called Ashok shows up to claim ownership of his soul. John reveals that he sold his soul three times. When the demons begins to argue over ownership of his soul, John uses their distraction to set himself free and traps the demons with his magic. John states out that all this was his plan all along. Spectre is much too powerful for a mere mortal like himself, so he got him to reveal to them where he was, so he can use their portal to escape the house of mystery. Finally, he successfully leaves the house only to be confronted by Spectre once again. He calls Spectre Heartless who kept on wiping his memories and continued using his loved ones to rip him apart. Spectre replies that he meant no ill intent, but he only placed him in a place to spend his rest of eternity with his loved ones in an endless perfect dream. But since John think of himself as unworthy of happiness, his past guilt is what turned his friends and family into monster. This time, John is ready to accept the punishment. The Spectre states that he tried to protect him from the consequences of changing the past, but John had already closed the last window to the House of Mystery. Now he cannot escape the punishment from the universe. John begs the Spectre to help or even kill him, but he is sucked into the bright light, and that was how the movie ended. Thank you for watching guys. If you love animation movies, please subscribe to this channel and keep watching. Bye.